how to cheerfully endure understand it is agamah apaina endure everything keeping this in mind what is it whatever is there now some day or the other it will go away it has to go away it cannot remain with you mainly the sorrowful situations only worries us as a famous english saying goes even this will pass away that is agamah apaina everything in this world is anitya impermanent now we have to think a little how to cheerfully endure the happenings of life first technique is the same technique just understand that the bad patch of time which you are going through some day or the other it will go away it cannot remain with you for all the time because in this world everything is anitya The second way of practicing Tithiksha is understand that whatever you are going through is your own karma phala. You only have ordered it. So what you are going through is tailor made. You have performed some action in the past. The very same action has come in the form of karma phala in the present. Don't blame the people around. they are not the cause your karma is the cause accept it there is no other way number 3 always know that whatever is happening is happening for the good this is another way of cheerful endurance in the first two cases cheerful endurance is not possible even this will pass away it won't help this is my karma phala it won't help somewhere you endure helplessly to cheerfully accept a thing you must always see the hidden hand of omniscient omnipotent omnipresent god in giving you that particular result or situation there is a supreme lord who is taking care of the whole world he is sarvatnya omniscient is sarva shaktiman omnipotent is sarva vyapi omnipresent such a supreme lord without whose command even a dust particle cannot move here or there without whose command even a blade of grass cannot move when such a lord is taking care of this entire cosmos so if this is the kind of situation he has put me in definitely there is a good purpose some purpose which at present i am not able to understand a noble purpose is definitely there this is the way to think God is my father and mother bhagwan himself says that pita aham asya jagato mata dhata pitama i am the father and mother of this whole universe so when the father or the mother does something to the child it is always for the good of the child the child may not understand with this attitude you must face the situation accept the situation hmm. look at this plants and trees etc what all kinds of seasons they have to undergo rainy season summer season storms winter season isn't it and then finally what is the result beautiful flowers juicy fruits now they don't come just like that that plant has endured so many ups and downs and as a result the beautiful flower comes hmm? the sweet fruit comes in the same way in our life also you will always find that it is the suffering which makes you a noble person always it is not the it is not the what i call good things that happen to you when good things happen to you you tend to become arrogant when good things happen to you you tend to become indifferent to other sorrows when good things happen to you you tend to become careless 
when good things happen to you you tend to become ungrateful just observe when suffering comes to you just the opposite happens when you go through suffering you are at your best because you are absolutely alert in that state of pain you cannot remain in tamas when you are suffering you become introspective and a person who has suffered when he sees the suffering of others his heart melts in compassion because when he sees the other suffering he is able to recollect his own suffering yes i know this pain because i have gone through it so then what happens your heart melts seeing the pain of others and also you are filled with humility you are filled with gratitude for god there are so many things the pain can teach you and that is why all those what you call people who have done bad karmas they are sent to naraka all kinds of sufferings are there descriptions are there now what is naraka it is nothing but a washing machine you put all the soil clothes there and what comes out is dress clean and neat isn't it what happens there when that criminal minded fellow suffers like this it is that all the impurities of the mind gone a person who suffers comes out to be a noble person it can be physical suffering it can be mental suffering in fact it is the suffering which brings you vairagya dispassion it is this suffering which makes your mumukshutvam intense the desire for liberation becomes intense only during the moments of suffering the best example is bhagavad gita the suffering of arjuna led to bhagavad gita isn't it in your own life if you see it is always the suffering which has made you a better person at the moment of suffering we can't accept this no doubt at the moment of suffering we may curse god accept it but after that after that bad patch is gone you always come out to be a better person this is true with everyone so therefore we say even the suffering is a blessing in disguise that is why kunti mata prays for suffering isn't it what was her prayer vipada santu nashashvat tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yatsyat apunar bhava darshanam bhagwan vipada santu nashashvat let vipat calamity strike us again and again because it is only during the calamities that i sincerely from the depth of my heart i seek you and it is in those moments when i really experience your presence in my heart and as a result it is only this attunement with you which puts an end to the cycles of birth and death so therefore bhagwan keep giving me calamities alone see the prayer of kunti mata my god all the great saints and all whenever sufferings come to them they say bhagwan thank you very much this is what they say thank you very much so our attitude towards sorrow has to change so what does bhagwan say you have no choice with the outer situation throw yourself at the mercy of the omnipotent omniscient lord and when the sorrow come what should be your attitude tetikshasva cheerfully endure because whatever happens is for your happy for your welfare and well being alone but how to cheerfully endure hold on to the permanent this don't forget yam hi navyathayanti ete purusham purusharshabha that person who is not afflicted by these ups and downs of life shita ushna sukha dukha etc those people who don't get afflicted vyathayanti ete through this through these pairs of opposites that person who is sama dukha sukham 
who is equanimous equipoised even amidst sukha or dukha not getting elated when there is sukha not getting dejected when there is dukha he handles both the situations with a peaceful equanimous mind bhagwan says such a person is dhira the wisest man sah amrutatvaya kalpate such a person is fit for amrutatvam the state of immortality such a person alone is fit to realize the highest state so what has to be done now this is the formula of life in life in this world there are two things what are they one is the impermanent thing the other is the permanent thing so what is the secret of living a happy life hold on to the permanent play in the realms of the impermanent this is the secret what is the permanent thing the self the consciousness it is nitya it is not agamaha apainaha coming and going no everything else comes and goes but there is one thing which just witnesses the coming and going of everything what is it consciousness hold on to consciousness and then live your life in the realms of change this is the secret of living a happy life constant change agamaha apainaha what is that which is coming and going sense organs are coming and going sense objects are coming and going experiences are coming and going but what doesn't come and go the experiencer the witness doesn't come and go hold on to him for your existence for your security for your happiness holding on to it you become cheerful with that cheerful attitude live in the world of change this is the secret knowingly or unknowingly we do this everywhere when you are watching a movie in the theater what are you doing you are doing the same thing isn't it you very well know that whatever is happening in the movie is not going to affect me there is a fire in the theater in the movie <laughs> there is a fire in the movie you very well know that fire is not going to affect you isn't it that's why you are comfortably seated in the theater there's a flood in the movie you know it is not going to affect you so how are you able to enjoy the movie you are able to enjoy the movie by holding on to the reality by holding on to the nitya vastu then you enjoy the anitya vastu isn't it the very reason why you are enjoying the film is because in the film also you cry and weep and all that in the theater you do that but you enjoy even that crying you even enjoy that sorrowful state isn't it very strange you are enjoying sorrow <laughs> you are enjoying crying and weeping you are enjoying the moments of anxieties and fears and worries how are you able to enjoy these fears and worries you are able to enjoy because at the back of your mind deep within you are holding on to the reality and what is the reality i have nothing to do with that that cannot affect me i am different from that the whole thing is an illusion because of this you are able to enjoy the movie isn't it one part of the mind is holding on to the reality another part of the mind is playing in the realms of change this is the secret everywhere you do the same thing you are playing chess what is chess it is nothing but war <laughs> there is a king there is a queen there is elephants there are horses there are soldiers and killing is happening you are killing others others are killing you even in all these killings what is happening to you you are unaffected isn't it because these killings are only mere imaginations it is not real in the real world nothing is happening not even one drop of blood has come out 
isn't it always you see you are enjoying only when you are absolutely secure holding on to the reality otherwise you can't enjoy the one year old child makes his father a horse the father readily becomes a horse no the child is sitting on the back the child says come on eat grass and this father eats grass no he is a horse now on the four on all the fours is crawling <laughs> who the father the child is sitting on the back come on drink water the father drinks water and makes all the sound of the horse also to entertain the child isn't it so even when the father has become the horse is he miserable he is not miserable why because he knows i am not horse <laughs> isn't it in the drama also the same thing you take up the role you are ready to become a king or a beggar you are ready to become a wretched creature there you do all kinds of things why are you able to do all this because at the back of the mind you know i have nothing to do with this role i am somebody different so when you have that knowledge you are able to cheerfully do your role in the world in the same way we must know who we are without that the life can be a tragedy give importance to the permanent thing never give importance to the impermanent what happens when you give importance to the impermanent have you seen these people who commit suicide when india loses the match against pakistan <laughs> in the newspaper they come it is the heights of madness 11 plus 11 players are playing compared to the crowd of india which is in crores what is this 11 some insignificant number of players are playing in a very very small maybe 1 acre 2 acre land now what is the size of india <laughs> and then in the newspaper it comes india defeated dash what has india to do with these 11 people meaningless it is all your imagination foolish imagination some 11 people taking a piece of wood and a ball and hitting and now you are connecting it to india isn't it and there are people who take it very seriously oh my god india has lost the match now what is the purpose of living bus commit suicide <laughs> this is the heights of foolishness that which is absolutely silly and insignificant has been given the maximum value the greatest value greater than your life itself and what is the result shoka is the result isn't it in our life also we do the same mistake the most important thing is ignored the most unimportant things are given the maximum value and thus we go on suffering in life bhagwan says shift your attention to the most important thing in you the consciousness in you which is always there which is in fact waiting for you to turn your attention inward so that that consciousness can bless you with peace with happiness that's why swami vekananda said arise awake wake up you are sleeping now considering yourself to be this mere fleshy filthy perishable body so what does bhagwan say hold on to the permanent and what do you call play your role in the fields of the impermanent as puji gurudev used to say andar rama bahar drama bas simple andar rama bahar drama 